Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty galling when you see Jared Huffman trying to propose that kind of legislation. Most of you here are pretty familiar with his track record. He's got a really very good record where the environment is concerned, except in the, on this issue in our backyard. Now, if you're not in his district, that doesn't mean you can't go after him, and you should, because he is the congressman whose district, Point Reyes National Seashore, is in. That's all of our park. So he may not be your congressman if you don't live in Marin County North, but it is legitimate for him to hear from you. The other thing that's really galling is what many people have mentioned today, and that is that there is private for-profit uh, operations going on in our national park that are desecrating the place. Now, if you can't preserve and protect your national parks, what hope do we have of saving our environment at all, right? Now, we live in perilous times. There's a lot of really nasty crap going down. The democracy is hanging on by its fingernails. The fascist Republicans are trying to take it over and destroy it through voter suppression, gerrymandering, and just out-and-out -out corruption, right? And underlying that, we are on the eve of destruction when it comes to the environment. It is here. It is happening. It is now. We're in a mega drought. We've seen mega fires. We see mega floods. We see everything starting to fly apart. So you ask yourself, okay, is this issue that we're here for today really important in the context of that reality? The answer is yes, because where there's anywhere there's an, injust an injustice, then there is injustice everywhere. And as some have referred to this earlier, Teresa, Laura, Point Reyes National Seashore should be the crown jewel of America the Beautiful 30 by 30 program that says we must preserve 30% of our lands and water by 2030 if we've got a snowflake's chance in hell of surviving. No pun intended. That's... Um, I think that makes this a, a very important issue. And when we get rid of these ranchers, then we have the opportunity to actually heal this land and show how nature can thrive again. But it's under the boot heel of those ranchers. And what are those ranchers? Those ranchers are the modern face of European white colonialism. And it's time for those guys to go. That's just wrong, right? Those guys are squatters. They've had a good run. They got an extra 25 or 30 years out of the deal, but they made a deal. They got paid top dollar for their land, and they were given generous 25-year or lifetime tenancies leases to phase out their operations, and they reneged on it. So what's up with that shit, huh? It's time for them to go, right? All right, so now I was hoping to see 500 people here today because this is an important issue. Well, thank you guys for showing up. You guys are the core. You guys are the guys that are gonna make things change, right? Now, I think we're all, most of us here, and I'm, I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir and I love the choir, <laughs> but I, I think most of us know that we're waiting for the shoe to drop. And that is going to be a lawsuit to challenge the record of decision, right? And when that happens, you know, make sure you're on the email list and stuff because we're going to be passing the hat for nickels and dimes. Every little bit's going to help, right? But in the meantime, this is a political reality how those guys have survived this long, right? So there's, uh, there's a number of people that you can contact. The first and foremost is Jared Huffman. Now, most of you probably are activist enough to know that if you go on somebody's website and they're a congressperson, they want to know your zip code. They want to know that you're in their district. If you're not, they're going to ignore you. 
Well, if Huffman does that on his website, call up his goddamn office in San Rafael, right? Call him up, leave him a message, and call him again the next week, right? Because we want to embarrass him. Embarrassment is a powerful tool to get the attention of elected representatives and to get them to change their position. And you know what? Jared could and should be the hero here. He should come to our side and polish his green bona fides and do the right thing and help us get rid of those ranches, right? Let's encourage him to do that, right? All right. Um, let's see. Um, just going to check my notes here because, you know, Skyler's good at this. And I'm a little rusty. <laughs> Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I did this last week, and I would recommend that you do, you know, it's like if you don't have the wherewithal to lay your body on the line at Keystone XL or show up at the next Black Lives Matter, you know, God bless you if you do, and we should all do that wherever we can. But this is an important battle. And one of the things that we want to do to get those ranchers out of there is to make it harder for them to survive economically. So two dairies, Strauss Family Creamery, known for its quote unquote progressive organic work in the dairy industry and yes organic going organic has improved some practices but if you go out there to the park and look at those ranches you can tell organic does not mean good for the earth right so strauss family creamery and clover sonoma by from those dairies out in our seashore. Go online and say, as long as you're gonna be buying from those people out there, I am not going to buy your product. Now, I'm not a vegan, so I was able to say, hey, I've enjoyed your products in the past, but I won't anymore. Even if you're a vegan, you can go on there and say, I'm not gonna buy your products. You know, maybe you're not already, but tell them. And tell other people to do that too, right? Okay, so, you know, the other people to contact besides Jared Huffman, Deb Holland, head of the interior, Native American woman, that gave us great hope when she was uh, appointed to that position. And then we find out that, you know, she says that Jared Huffman kind of uh, mentored her, you know, uh, from his work on the Natural Resources Committee, et cetera. And, you know, it was a real disappointment to all of us for, uh, for when, when the record of decision was made in favor of the ranchers. Um, and then, so she needs to hear from us. And there's a new Native American gentleman who's the head of the uh, Park Service, uh, Chuck Sams III. He should hear from us too. This can't help but resonate with those folks. And it's our job to just raise our voices and make noise. We need to just be vocal. We need to make it viral. Uh, you know, we just need to get it out there and keep making noise. And if you don't think that's been effective, look at what's happened so far. Our voices have forced the Park Service to actually provide water for the Thule elk in this drought. And that's not, they're not gonna go back on that. That's not gonna change. That's thanks to you folks, to us. We did that. Now we just have to keep working on that. Um, so let's see, I've got this uh, uh, Jared Huffman. Oh, Diane Feinstein, would she please go away? She has been the handmaiden, to be polite, for the animal ag industry, and she is just rotten. God, die if I beat it. Well, of course, you know, Jared Huffman actually thinks that part of what his reasoning for supporting the ranches is, he thinks he's got a shot at her seat when she finally does go away. And so that's part of his motivation. And I wanna tip the hat to Emerson Yuri and the, uh, Environews.tv, they've done some really good research, and he's pointed out that Jared Huffman has actually uh, received more contributions from the animal ag industry than he has from environmentalists, right? 
So when he says, oh, you know, I've got my green credentials, yeah, he's done pretty good, but he's not perfect. And we're here to call him out on that, right? Okay. Um, so just once again, uh, you know, in the context of the, you know, the crazy world we live in, taking action here is good for the soul. It's empowering, right? And we've gotten some progress, and we need to get a lot more. But you show, folks showing up here today show that there's dedication, and that dedication is going to pay off in the long run, right? So this is empowering. It's good for the soul. It helps you overcome the inertia that all the corporate lies and bullshit dump on you and tend to make you want to just, you know, crawl under the blankets and hide. Uh, so... God bless you guys. Thank you guys. I mean, this is powerful. We may not be big in numbers today, but your persistence is just unparalleled. All right. And then uh, just to finish up, um, I was inspired to get involved in this issue by two things. And one of them was Skyler's movie, The Shame of Point Reyes, one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. The other one was Dr. Marty Griffin. You, go, you guys know Marty. Marty is the author of the book, Saving the Marin Sonoma Coast, instrumental in stopping massive development in Tomales Bay and making Bolinas Lagoon look like Marina del Rey. He also was the founder of, of Audubon Canyon Ranch Bird Sanctuary. Marty sent me some comments to share with you. He says, I was there from the beginning. There was never any idea of letting the ranchers stay in Point Reyes National Seashore. They, the Park Service, did give them the 25-year extensions, but the ranchers should have gone after that because they were paid fully for their property, and they had the entire east shore of Tomales Bay where they could have moved with much better soil and more water for the cattle. And just as an aside, when most of those ranching families sold their property, they did buy property on the other side of the of Tomales Bay in Marin and Sonoma County. They do have ag lands. They are ag rich folks, right? Marty goes and says the ranchers that have stayed on the property for 60 years are getting a great real estate deal. This is some of the most valuable coastal real estate in California, and they are not letting go. I have been investigating each one of the ranches in the seashore and find incredible damages to the land, the landscape, and to the water supply, the soil, and grasslands. It will take years to repair the damage, and they should be held responsible. Right? All the damages have now been well documented, and yet the National Park Service has failed to control it. In fact, the ranchers seem to have great political power. There has been little effort by the park to repeal their leases. One of the greatest damages is, is to the magnificent Drake's Estero, which was hard won by the public in the lawsuits of 2012. There are cattle wandering on the beaches of the Estero, and the destruction of some of the most magnificent vistas of Drake's Bay and Estero. The only solution is for the ranchers to leave soon before their damages are even greater. Now that's from a gentleman who's 101 years old. If that doesn't tell you we're on the right track, nothing will. Thank you.